Good morning, John Gilkison here. I wanted to do a video on uh, plug-in hybrid electrics uh, because one of the considerations I had was was buying uh, was trading this car in here, my Ford C Max, uh, for a, a Ford Escape plug-in hybrid electric. Uh, Ford's come out with a new one uh, in the spring of 2020. It'll be available. And, of course, it would be a, a slightly bigger vehicle than the uh, Ford C-Max. <clears throat> it would uh, have 30 or 35 miles of range versus the 20 miles of range the uh, C-Max has. So, I got interested on what that would do for me. And uh, so I kept records for a, a week or 10 days or so. And here they are right here. The long and the short of it is that <clears throat> I went 395 miles and uh, I came up with the fact that in the Ford C-Max over those miles I did 64% uh, of my miles were in EV mode and uh, of course some of those trips were less than 20 miles so they were 100% but we live about 20 miles from town so uh, that lowers the average quite a bit and um, so anyway where appropriate I added 10 miles in of EV miles and I came up with a, a Ford Escape with 30 miles of range would net me over this same 390 plus miles would net me 82 percent EV miles and that's significant it really is and there's some talk that uh, because the numbers the Moroni figures aren't out on the vehicle just yet that uh, it may get up to it said 30 or more miles and it could get up to as much as 35 miles of range and I think that's true looking at the battery size numbers so anyway um, I've been studying whatever I can on the vehicle um, because <coughs> again there's no Moroni numbers on it but we do know all the facts and figures on size of gas tank the um, uh, the features and the vehicle, frankly, is going to really come loaded. It's going to have lane keeping assist and self parking and heads up displays and you name it. So it'd be <coughs> quite a step up for us from this vehicle. But we're about 16, 17 months from making a new vehicle purchase. So I was just curious. I wanted to look into it. If we didn't buy a full electric car, what would that vehicle do for us? And. Um, it's quite a compelling choice because we live in the desert southwest and the um, charging infrastructure out here quite frankly just really isn't up to it for electric cars especially if you don't buy a Tesla and I'm having a bit of trouble getting into the Tesla market it's just at least probably about ten thousand dollars more than than I'm really willing to spend and um, if I buy another vehicle that's uh, all electric but not a Tesla, then I have trouble charging for trips. With a 2020 Ford Escape, I wouldn't uh, have any trouble taking trips at all. I'd just still be using gasoline. But if you could eliminate 80, 90 percent of, of all your gasoline consumption, it would be minuscule and it was you'd still be lowering your carbon footprint so I'm kind of liking the idea for a vehicle I could probably get into for around 40,000 rather than 50,000 and uh, 
it would keep my payments lower. <clears throat> and we're retired and cash flow is an issue. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. Um, that plug-in hybrids are still a good choice and they're a good idea for most people. Most people live closer to town than we do and their percentage of EV miles would be higher than ours. So um, ours is practically a worst case scenario and it still would be good with 30, 35 miles of range we would be in good shape. Now one of the other issues is, is let's say you take a Tesla Model 3 with a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack and you have you know that that amount of resources in battery materials to make that 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. Well that same amount of resources for battery production could make five Ford 2020 escapes with with the 30 or 35 miles of EV only range. That would amount to 80, 90 percent of your driving, so, at least locally, not on trips. So we only take a couple trips a year, so trips are not a real big issue, but when we do take them, we, we would need to charge or we need a way to complete the trip. So, um, so I think plug-in hybrids make a, a, have a compelling case for, especially in a world where uh, resources for producing, producing lithium-ion batteries are constrained right now. Uh, that uh, plug-in hybrids uh, really stretch those resources and, and allow more people to experience electric drive, which as I keep saying is a gateway drug for uh, electric vehicles. So, um, so I'm a fan of them. Uh, they do have their cons also. Um, obviously there's the complexity of uh, the plug-in hybrid uh, drivetrain. You're carrying around both an engine and an electric motor and batteries and so forth. However, if you buy a vehicle brand new, um, you're not going to really have any problems. Now, I would have a big problem going out and buying a plug-in hybrid electric that had a 150,000 miles on the clock already. And if I did go out and buy one, because that's all I could afford, I would be ready to junk the thing if I was into any major expenses trying to fix it because it would be very possible it would cost you more to repair the vehicle than the vehicle would be worth. So, um, however, that's not the case. I'd be buying a brand new vehicle. And this vehicle here, we have um, 35,000 miles on it. And uh, it's still worth about uh, $15,000 if I was to sell it today. Uh, we are going to sell it on in 16 months and we're going to try to get a couple thousand dollars over what we owe on it to pay it off and to have money for a down payment. So we'll see if that's doable. Um, so um, it's a great vehicle, don't get me wrong. We, we love it. It's it's a bit, it's a bit small. Um, it does lack a little bit of uh, carrying capacity when you go buy groceries, for example. If you're going to buy a lot of groceries, we, we take the truck, um, simply because of all the room we have to carry things. And a small SUV-like vehicle would definitely have more interior room than this one. They have larger tires, more ride comfort, and a lot more bells and whistles on this new vehicle. This vehicle right here, the technology is already kind of out of date. It's a 2015, and so it's four years old, although we didn't buy it till 2016, so we've only had it three years, two and a half, I think. So, so there you are. I'll let you go. That's, that's something to chew on. Um, I'm definitely an electric vehicle fan, and I'm a, a fan of anything that gets people into electric vehicles, even if it's a plug-in hybrid. Even if it's a hybrid, for that matter, but uh, I I don't think hybrids are 
they reduce your gas consumption a bit, but uh, they don't have the potential to reduce your gas consum consumption what a, a plug-in hybrid does. So uh, this one here, we're powering it on um, solar panels. <clears throat> so it's, it's carbon-free when you're driving EV. And the more EV miles we drive, the more carbon-free we can be. <clears throat> so if we made this choice, we'd be reducing our carbon emissions even more by another 20% for our driving. So I think it's a good idea. And I think it's definitely an option for people in our situation and people who live in parts of the country where the charging infrastructure isn't as good as it should be. So there you have it. Um, hope that uh, these things elucidated uh, some of these, some of my ideas on uh, plug-in hybrids and their utility. And uh, we'll see you on down the road. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.